Glad everybody made it out this morning on this cool morning. It uh, takes a little bit of getting used to, I'm sure, for everybody else, as it does for me. It drops to these temperatures all of a sudden. <laughs> but I'm grateful to see that everyone made it and that we're all uh, safe and warm in the church this morning. Just going to start this morning with uh, reading of scripture from John 11. Just as we settle in this morning, uh, let's turn our hearts to what, what Christ says. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Father, we just thank you today that we can be here this morning. Thank you that we have the privilege to be able to worship, to be able to gather in fellowship in your name. We thank you for, for your resurrection and just the the, the true uh, the, the truth of that is it really gives us purpose for everything that we do everything that we are the Lord just help us to be focused on you this morning thank you for your love for us and just give us uh, hearts to worship and to learn and grow in Jesus name Amen. And death was arrested Oh, 
Thank you. 
facing similar challenges all through history, so that's why it's great to be able to sing songs from, from further back and just to realize that God is always working no matter what the situations of the world are. <clears throat> oh Lord my God, when I am also God 
Just a trick, Lucy. I got one more for you. Dear God, <coughs> did you mean for a giraffe to look like that, or was that just an accident? <laughs> Norma shows a giraffe that's kind of um, in a knot. The neck is in a knot. <laughs> If you would turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, we're going to read verses 29 to the end of the chapter. And if you'd like to stand with us, we're reading from the New King James Version. Beginning in verse 29. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If in manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? If the dead do not rise, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to you, to your shame. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seeds its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differs from another star in glory so also is the resurrection of the dead the body is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, a living being. The last Adam became a living spirit. 
However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also those who are made of dust. And in the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brother, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corrupt, corruptible must, not, must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruptible, and the mortal has put on immortality, then we sh shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Father, we thank you for these words in this chapter. Lord, it is so powerful. It is so important. This topic of resurrection is so essential for us to understand and not just to understand but to believe help us to believe this morning we pray these things in jesus name amen please be seated you know in our sunday school class this morning we were talking about error and how many in our day are being deceived and Gerald brought up something he's been studying, that in times past, there were many that were deceived, even in the early church, after the Bible's written, and he was studying some of these, some of these early ones who believed, and that they had to have these, these, these different counsels to, to counteract what's, what, was, what was being taught by some. And, and, I, and I got to thinking, just as I was going to come up here this morning, the, the, when we talk about the resurrection, think about the resurrection and how long this idea was in the mind of God. And think about the early times in the Bible. Do we find the resurrection? And as we think about that for a moment, I want you to turn to Genesis 22, to a familiar passage, but I want to show you that it was way back right here in the beginning. Now, when you look, well, we used to have a, uh, a map up here, and it's actually quite a little ways. Genesis covers a lot of time. But we find here a man and his wife, and... Abraham was told that he was going to be having a child. He was 100 years old. His wife was 90. And, 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 and so he's told he's going to have a child. Finally, he does have this child. And, and he's told by God that his son would have children and that, that they, he would have a nation and they would be as, as great as the stars, the numbers would be the stars in the sky. And, and he has this child. And then what happens? God tells him to take this child and go, go to this mountain and sacrifice your son. And as we pick up the story in chapter 22, we're, we're at the point where Abraham has his son with him. He puts wood on his pick for Isaac to carry. And he says these words in verse, verse 8. He says these words to, to the servants. He's traveled for three days and he says this to them. Pardon me, it's a little bit further before that. Uh, in verse verse um, 5, he says this to his servants. 
stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. You know what that is? It's faith. And it's faith. And you know, in, in, in the book of Hebrews, turn to Hebrews 11. In Hebrews 11, it describes what, what was happening here. In verse 18, verse 17 says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Notice it uses that wording, only begotten son. The same wording we use of Jesus. Of whom it was said, In Isaac your, she, your, your seed shall be called. Concluding, that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. So Abraham believed he was about to take his son's life, that God would raise him up from the grave. You have a father, and it says here in Hebrew, Hebrews, giving up his only begotten son, and he would be raised up. What is that a picture of? Way back here in Genesis 22, it is a picture of Jesus rising from the grave. So I ask you again this question, when was it God's idea for the resurrection? Do you know, do you know now think about this. When was it God's idea? It has been God's idea since eternity past. So, so, you know, and when we look at this passage here in 1 Corinthians, there's a lot here. And, and we're going we're gonna to talk about a few different things. We're not going to be able to talk about it all because there's a lot here. But, but, you know, it starts off with this very controversial issue. There's literally been more than 40 different viewpoints by scholars on what it means this, this whole idea that Paul brings up, baptizing for the dead. And we know that groups like the Mormons, they actually do this. They call it proxy baptizing. Baptizing for the dead. And, and we know that Scripture and, and God does not teach this. And I do not believe Paul. Paul the Corinthian people knew about this. And, and, and Paul brings it up. And what he's doing here, he brings this up and he brings up different quotes. He brings up this, this quote in, in Isaiah 22, 13. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. He brings up this quote from a, from a playwright in his day. Evil company corrupts good habits. He brings up this practice that is practiced some places here in Corinth that people were baptizing for the dead. And what is he doing? He's using these examples in his own day. He's using examples even of a quote that people are living by. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. Because if the resurrection isn't true, then this is what we might as well do. We said this last week. Let's go home and watch the football game. If the resurrection isn't true, there's no point in us being here. And I want to ask you another question this morning. Why is it God wants to look, look at your own look at your own hand here? Do you realize this? Now, our bodies are going to be different, like Jesus. But He's going to take our body and He's going to use it. Those are, those are the, those loved ones that we have. Their, 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 body is in, their, their body is in the ground. God is going to raise those bodies up, their actual bodies. Now, I think they'll be younger. I think they'll look different. It'll be, it'll be a body that will last forever. But why is it God wants to use your actual body? Do you understand what God is doing? You, you, know, what, you know what it is? He wants you, you, the failed you, to be with him forever. Why didn't he just leave you there and just give you a different body? He wants to give you, you know what, you know what? Do you know that Adam is going to be in his body, the one that ate the fruit? And he, Eve ate the fruit. They, they sinned, they failed, but you know what? God doesn't do do-overs on this. 
And you know what it is? He loves you. He loves you. And he wants to restore you. You. And he takes your body. And he's going to he's going to be a restored body just like Jesus had. And that's what that's what's going to happen. Now we're going to, we're going to look at three three points this morning. What are three things that we can learn from this passage? The first one, the resurrection is a spiritual miracle performed by God. The resurrection is a spiritual miracle performed by God. Take a look at verse 42. Verse 41 says, There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. God miraculously takes this physical thing that is corrupt and he makes it spiritual. And the resurrection is, it's a, it's a spiritual miracle. And think about what God does in us. He, he, he brings out this miraculous event in our life when we receive Christ and we, we believe, and, 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 and it's talked about this the start of the chapter, when we believe that Jesus died on the cross and he rose again, when we believe this, spiritual things happen in us. And the real you, the real you inside of you, the real you, the, your soul that will live forever. God brings out this miracle. And we talked about this the, the, uh, take, talked about this a little while ago. That, you know, the problem with the scales, the problem with the scales, we think our good works are on one side, our bad works are on the other side. And I was listening to a, to a message, and, and, and this pastor very correctly points out that's not how it is. All your works are on one side. You're good and you're bad. And God is on the other side. And when we look at that, we have no hope. But you know what happens with the resurrected Jesus? You know, think about this. How was Jesus able to die? He was God. You know how he was able to die? Because he had your sins on him. He had my sins on him. He had all the sins of the world on him. And because of that, God was bringing down his wrath on Jesus and he died. He died this terrible death. And then you know what God does is that scales, you're, you're good and you're bad here. God's on the other side. What he does is he says, okay, I'm going to take Jesus. We're going to say that Jesus lived your life. We're going to put that over here. And because he was perfect, we get to live the life of Jesus and be with him forever in heaven. And think about this, this, this spiritual miracle that takes place. The resurrection is that. That's what it is. And it's performed by God. It's performed by God in us. See, there's nothing we can do. You know, you know, we, you know what we bring to the equation? Our sin. Even our faith, God gives that to us. But we believe. And, and then we respond. We respond because the Spirit of God is working in us. And we respond and we say, Lord, I believe. I choose to believe. I choose to believe you died. I choose to believe you rose. You remember when Jesus was talking to Thomas and he, and he says, you know, you, you, you touched my hands. You, you touched the scars and, and, and you've seen it. But blessed are those who don't see it and believe. That's us. We don't see it, but we, we, but we spiritually, God brings this about. The resurrection is a spiritual miracle performed by God. Point number two this morning, the resurrection is proof Jesus is God. Look at verses 26 and 27. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who puts all things under him is 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 
expected. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who puts all things under him, that God may be all in all. When Jesus died on the cross, he defeated sin. And when he rose from the grave, he defeated death. You think about that. I remember, I remember watching different uh, different dramas. We did this one drama, and and it's and it's like the when when the, the music changes and the, and the, the, the Jesus is going to rise. We had this man that was dressed. He was dressed as the devil, and he's he's on his back, and he's trying to stop him from from rising up. And then the music changes, and he and he rises up, and the devil was thrown thrown off the stage, and everybody in the audience is cheering. Why? Because Jesus defeated death. Amen. Think about that. Because think about when death came. When death came in the garden. What did, you, what did God say to Adam? If you eat of this fruit, you will die. Something had to happen to defeat death. And the only one that could defeat death was God. And that's why God had to come in the human body. He had to come, and then he had to, to, to overcome death. And he did it. He did it. He, he, he died, and then he rose. He rose from the grave. The resurrection is proof. Jesus is God. And you think about that. He went around, he went around saying this, and, and the, 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 the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they wanted to stone him because he claimed to be God. But, and then remember what he said. He said, they, he was, they were talking about the temple and they're looking at the physical temple. He says, destroy this temple in three days, I'll write, uh, I, will, I will raise up. And they thought he was talking about the temple of, of, the, of, the, of, of the physical temple. And, and think of what God was talking about, what Jesus was talking about was, see, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. The resurrection is proof, and it is proof that Jesus is God. Point number three this morning, the resurrection is the, is the climax of salvation plan from the beginning. We looked at this, this story in Hebrews, and, and, and in, in Hebrews chapter 11 and, and Genesis chapter 22. God planned it. God planned it. Now look for a moment in Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15. God is talking to the, to the serpent. He says to him, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. How did God do this? How did God do this? How was God able to, to defeat the devil by dying on the cross and rising from the grave? Right back here at the very beginning, back in the garden, God tells the, 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 the serpent, you will be defeated. You, your head will be crushed. Do you, know, do you know since then, you know how many, how many Jewish women they grew up, and when they, were, when they were going to have a child, they were thinking, I wonder if this will be the Messiah. And then along comes Mary. She's visited by the angel. You're going to have the Messiah. And, and I, don't, I don't think Mary could fully grasp what was, what was all going on there. But, you know, it's incredible. What a privilege she had to have Jesus, to be this one where the seed would rise up, br br bruise your head. He will bruise his heel. And you think about the, the heel of, of the Lord as it had a nail in it, in his hands. And he, and he was carrying all our sin. The resurrection is the climax of the salvation story. You know, I was looking at these pictures over here. And as you look at them, there's a picture of the cross, and there's a picture picture of the uh, of the, the way the candles were in the in the, uh, in the in the in the in the in the Ark of the Covenant, and the and just just the way the way that it was all set up. But the cross is the central picture. The resurrection is the central picture all through even the Old Testament. 
You know, and I, I was looking this week and I was looking at this. What are scriptures in the Old Testament that talk about the resurrection? And you have to really look and there's, there, 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 there are some. There are some. But, but, but you have to really search. But you know, think about Jesus when he's on the road to Emmaus. And he starts to describe these things. And, and, and it's written here in Hebrews 11. It's written. And, and you know, when you, when you read, when you read this, this passage in Hebrews 11, and you read the whole thing that, that talks about, about Abraham, you know, you know what's really interesting? Find it here. It talks about the body of Abraham and Sarah. And how Sarah herself received strength and conceived a seed. She bore a child when she was past the age because she judged, she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars in the sky and the multitude. Do you realize the very nation of Israel? Sarah's womb was dead. Their very nation is a miracle of the resurrection. Because think about it, her womb was as good as dead, and, and, and yet Abraham receives this vision that your descendants will be like the, like the stars in the sky, there will be so many. And God took a miracle in Sarah and Abraham, and they had this child when it was impossible. You see, here's the, here's the issue, folks. This is the real issue. If we are going to be a follower of Christ, you cannot be a follower of Christ, you cannot be a Christian if you don't believe in miracles. You can't. You know why? Because the whole thing is a miracle. Our very salvation is a miracle. And, and we got to understand, we, 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 we're, we're not... We're not, we're not Good people being made better or bad people being made good. Or dead people being made alive. That's what we are. And how did that happen? It happened at the cross. And it happened at Jesus' resurrection. And that is our own story. And God's going to take our bodies and he's going to raise us up. And, and we'll talk about this a little bit more next week. The, this final victory in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed for this corruptible must be put on incorruption and this mortal must be put on to immorality. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh Hades, where is their victory? I don't know about you, but I sometimes meet people and they don't like to go to funerals. They don't like to go to cemeteries. Why do people don't like, why do people fear death? Do you know why? Because it's the end. And if you don't have God, you have no hope. But the Lord Jesus gave us hope through the resurrection, through his death and resurrection, and he gave us hope, and, and he gave us victory. Victory over death. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word. It is powerful. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we see this story way back there in Abraham and Isaac. And the resurrection is there. The story of the resurrection is there. And it's powerful, Lord, when we think about it. And it's so very real. And we, 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 we only need to believe. Lord, help us to believe this morning. Help us to believe the truth that you died on a cross, that you rose again. Lord, we, we want to take a moment here. Maybe there's someone here who's never just prayed that prayer. Lord Jesus, I choose to believe that you died on the cross, that my sins were on you on that cross, and that when you rose from the grave, you rose to new life, because you want me to rise to new life. You want my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And Lord, I choose to receive you today.
I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and be my Savior. Pray these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ron, come and lead us in a closing song. To give up the grace of the Lord, the grace of God in our lives, that um, without the resurrection, uh, this wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same at all. Um, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see.